when we are hungry, our stomach growls and we perceive that we're hungry. And if we are listening to our bodies, we take a moment to eat, to respond to that hunger in some way. But what about our spiritual hungers? What about those times and those spaces and places where we are running so fast that we could not feel our soul rumbling, our spiritual hungers? And I think that this is, this is key for us. If we are to discern God's call, we often need to be still enough. The noise needs to be taken down enough that we can really listen and discern God's calling in our life. And so today we're looking at 1 Samuel 3. I think it's a great teacher for discernment. And in this chapter, Samuel is lying on the floor. He's a kid lying on the floor in the tabernacle. And there is a lamp lit. There are seven lamps that are lit. So there's just kind of dim lighting. And often those lamps would run, run out of fuel before the morning. Um, but they were still burning. So we know it's kind of in the middle of the night. And Samuel is most likely used to helping Eli. Eli, who's in charge of him, is a senior and has actually lost his vision recently. And so I'm guessing that he needs Samuel's help in the middle of the night often. And so Samuel hears a calling uh, in the middle of the night. In 1 Samuel 3, it says, The Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And because he's attentive, because he's used to being up to help his his senior, uh, Eli, out, he's listening, but he thinks it's Eli, and he runs, and he says, here I am, and he says, I didn't call you. And if you know the story, he does that a number of times, and finally Eli, in his wisdom, says, you know what, I think God is talking to you. You need to listen to what God is telling you to do. And I think in the same way for us, if we want to discern what God is calling us to do, we, we need that stillness. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the middle of the night. It could be just walking or jogging. It could be even on our commute, our drive to work. But just taking a moment to still our minds, to slow the pace, and to begin to reckon with, with just being open to what God is doing. And I, I think when I get into that place, I know for myself, that is a feeling of not thinking in a linear way anymore. Uh, my thinking begins to kind of free associate. Uh, I don't necessarily think about what the next thing is on my task, and I let go of control. And in that kind of stillness, I feel like that's often when God will, will say something. And so here are some ways that we know that that may be God talking to us. The, the first is this. It just keeps coming. It just doesn't let us go. Here in the story, God keeps calling Samuel, Samuel, and even though he ignores the call or mistakes the call, the calling keeps coming. And so if you have something in your life that keeps calling, listen to that. See what God might be doing for you. And then the second, the second piece of this, I think it's really important, is that at some point when that calling keeps coming, I think it's good to come to somebody else and say, this is happening. And that person, maybe it's a pastor, maybe it's a small group leader, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a parent, or even if you have adult children, maybe your children, and you share with them, this just keeps coming to me. And they echo back to you, boy, you really need to listen to that. Or if someone has God language, boy, you know, I think God might be saying something to you in your life. And then finally, I think this is probably the most important part about discerning God's call, is that I think that we think when God talks to us that everything is going to make sense. And the more that I hear from people's calls, the more that people kind of do that deep listening, the more I realize that often the calling doesn't make sense. Just like Samuel, we are confused. We don't know what's calling or who's calling or what's going on, but we know that the calling keeps coming. And I think that that often happens in people's lives when suddenly there is a deep empathy, a deep sense of concern for a particular issue or a particular person or a situation. Perhaps you're looking at the news. Perhaps you are noticing racial inequality and it's beginning to kind of come again and again. Or maybe you have a sense that you need to be the one to bring 
uh, the, the left and the right together. You, you're called to be someone who pulls together to divide, um, but it just keeps coming. And that discernment in your, in your life, it just keeps coming, and it doesn't necessarily make sense, but the feeling is there. And I think when the empathy, the feeling is there, it has very little to do with our ability to change the situation. I think it has much more to do with our sense of openness, our willingness to be like that child Samuel, when Samuel was a child, and to lay down on the floor with our eyes uh, a little bit open in in that stillness of the night and to listen and to be open to what comes. And when we have empathy for something beyond ourselves and it just keeps coming, I think that that often is God's calling. And that calling just needs time to make sense, to begin to have the pieces come together and I think that's where a small group or someone to walk with you one-on-one -on -one makes all the difference. If you need someone to walk one-on-one -on -one with you, talk to me uh, or talk to someone in your community who can do that with you. God may be calling you. And if that calling is coming to you right now, please listen to that growling, your stomach growling, your spirit growling, because God may be filling not your hunger, but somebody else's hunger with that. God be with you. If you enjoyed this, please share it, like it, as they say. Uh, message me. Let me know that this is, is helping you. If you have a prayer request, you can put it in the chat, or you can message me directly. God be with you.